the issues and today we're going to be just talking about the importance of a public education especially when you live in rural America uh, as many people in the state of Wyoming do for example Anna and Carson Anderson join us now thanks for joining us folks let's begin by telling people where what what, what is it is it pronounced Albany yeah we're in northern Albany County it's about 80 miles north of Laramie Wyoming Gotcha. The reason I had to ask that, because in Georgia, there's a, there's a town spelled the same way, and it's Albany. So I had to clear that yeah. one up there. But tell tell us about why you live there and you know, how far you are from, from certain comforts of life. Um, I'm a fifth generation on this ranch. Uh, my family's been ranching here for over 100 years. In 2006, I moved home. And my grandparents asked me to stay on, so I did. And I just love it here. Our whole family does. And that's why we live here. Um, like I said, we're very rural. Rural. We're 40 miles from a highway. That'd be by Rock River, Wyoming. So it's dirt road for at least an hour and a half, hour and 10 minutes on a good day. Yeah. And I married him, so. So she got stuck out uh, here. Yeah. So what, do you, what, kind, what kind of ranch, ranch do you have? Uh, we raise cattle, Black Angus and some Black Herefords. Nice. So let's talk about what it's like there with, with being a family so far off the beaten trail. Let's talk about education. What what? Tell us about the challenges you faced educating your kids. Yeah, we're, we're very... Um, rural and isolated where we are so um around here um kind of the norm is um getting rural schools um and then my husband can talk a little bit about the history of rural schools he had his family um be a part of rural schools um out here what they do is usually just a one-room building um if there's just one kid that's all there is used to be families we're out here, so you might have multiple grades all in the same room. Um, and that's what we were looking for was just a one room rural school. And usually there's another building to the side that the teacher lives in. And um, it was every, you know, they close down when kids get old, move to town. And then when, like us, another family starts up, they open another one. So we figured it was because it's a tradition out here. It wouldn't be no big deal. And to start with, it wasn't. We were approved and they told us multiple times that it was a go. And then the last minute they kind of backed and changed course. So now we've been in a legal uh, battle with them just to try to provide us a school for our children. Um, and the reason we want that is so the kids can interact with the teacher and learn. Um, we're on a ranch, so we're working all the time with the cows or just doing something. So uh, we're not teachers. Uh, you know, it takes a special person to teach. And so then we wanted our kids to have uh, interaction with somebody because uh, staring at a, at a screen all day long, just this it's hard. It's hard for a little cowboy who wants to be outside with stuff to be stuck inside. Yeah. And so where, where are your kids being educated right now? And Sorry. At home with me, we are trying to do it, yeah. and we will admit it like we're we're not teachers. We love our children very much. Um, we kind of picked that up so we could keep our family here on the ranch together, um, but it's definitely not an ideal situation. Um, we feel that they deserve a qualified, a certified teacher that knows what the heck they're doing. Um, I think... You know, teachers have the hardest job in the world and they need they need to get paid more. Um, I think like having having your um, kids like the, the the different hats you have to have are really important. Um, I'm not a teacher. And and if I wanted to be a teacher, I definitely would not want to be a teacher to my own kids. Um, I just I feel that they deserve better. And I we're not confident in homeschooling them um, and why while we're in Wyoming, um, 
that's our only out now because I will not put them on this road. This road is dangerous and I won't do it. So I hope that kind of answers your question. To, if you had to drive to the nearest school, how far a drive is that? It's an hour and 10 minutes to Rock River on a good day. But in the winter, you don't even know if you're going to make it or not. About, sure. about 10 miles from our house, the winds blow so hard, there's drifts that you have to have a road river with a snow cloud. And, and so from what I understand, a, a, a school, the idea of building a school was approved. And I guess you even offered to, to donate some land, I believe. And then what happened? Yeah, what well, well, what happens uh, if they want a place, we just, you know, just give like a, a little spot and they put a building on. And uh, we're still not real sure what the big cancellation was, but it seemed like they said the funding wasn't right. And they had a big inflated budget of $300,000 for these buildings. That they already owned. And we we're, were, we're under the impression they were going to move buildings from somewhere else, from other rural schools that were, had closed, they were going to move them. I think um, kind of the term like building a school, people kind of get the wrong idea about what a rural school is. Um, a lot of times it's just like a trailer that, you know, a lot of, we know that the district owns a few and we had proposed them just to bring one over and then kind of have, you know, a place for the teacher to teach out of and then um, have like the other half be like where she could live out of. So it's not, not when the article did say building a new school, which is kind of not exactly what we were asking for at the time. We were asking for structures that they already owned to be brought over to our ranch. I think once they weren't able to use their large maintenance funding for a funds project, they kind of just could cut it instead of just finding something cheaper, which we felt is a violation of our, um, our children's constitutional right. Mm -hmm. So then we decided um, to continue to fight. Before the Garrett community joined Albany County School District number one, um, they made promise promises that they would always recognize that there would be a need for a one-room rural school in the Garrett community. Um, so there's a lot of archive information um, I, I would love people to look at. Um, they talk about that they would always provide that they would always recognize that there would be a need for a teacher, a certified teacher out here. They talk in the in the annex. They talk about a bookmobile, an art teacher, and a PE teacher, kind of once, you know, a week. once a week. Which I mean, so that's why the Garrett community joined um, Albany County School District Number One um, in the 1970s. And it's well documented, and I still don't really understand how that's not legally binding. Like, it's like a contract. Right. Where does the challenge stand right now? What's it going to take to make this happen and get a get a one-room schoolhouse out there, whether it be a trailer or otherwise? You know, the Supreme Court's going to have to uh, well, rule it. They're going to have to rule in our case. The state Supreme Court? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. we had a We had a district court last January and that judge she the, dismissed, she us. dismissed us and we didn't feel like she took what we were saying as truth and so we applied it we appealed sorry we appealed it to the Supreme Court and now we're we're up to the point now just waiting on a decision and do you know have, have they heard um, arguments I think getting for and against yeah we yeah we sent briefs they've sent briefs and now they decided they could make a decision without uh, without oral with argument briefs. without oral yeah. argument so that's good so both both sides or both attorneys made their case so we don't have to do oral argument and i hear that that's a good thing because both the district and the state made their their case and we made ours and they don't have questions and so and so we're just kind of waiting yeah, I would imagine there's other parts of Wyoming being such a rural state that has one room schoolhouses, rural school. aren't there? Yes. Yep. yes. Yes, of course. There's one in our district. So we're a little confused how that's not disparity um, right there. But again, and we're not really coming after that other school, Cozy Hollow. Um, it is in Albany County, but um, we feel that they need a school as well. They're just as rural as we are. We're, um, we are both very rural. We obviously can't go to each other's school because 
It's over an hour drive. It's over. Like it takes me on a good day, an hour and 20 minutes to get over there. And it's kind of through a steep, narrow canyon. Um, we're not saying that they don't need a school because they do for their family. And that's who attends the school is their, just their family. But we're also saying that we also need a school. And we we feel that would be fair. We are all taxpayers out here. So, um, and they always kind of throw out the basket of goods. And we feel that we would like to um, utilize some of the baskets of goods. And historically, there's been multiple schools in Northern Albany County. At a time, like molded. at one time, there was like five or six at one time. Yeah. So this is nothing new. This is nothing new in our area. And do we have any idea when the decision might be handed down by the state Supreme Court? No, they can, you know, they can do whatever they would like, hopefully soon, but they, they can, they could take it here. They could take whenever, however long they want. They're kind of the boss. <laughs> and have you gotten any media coverage on this from local newspapers? Yes. So Cowboy State Daily and um, the Western Ag Reporters um, were also talking to a nice lady at the Boomeranger. Laramie Boomerang. Yeah, the Laramie Boomerang. <laughs> Sorry. And then you um, get our story out there, but um, we didn't know how many people we needed to talk to. Right. But we do have um, the legislatures kind of, you know, we're we're at the point now where we're trying to work towards a bill or um, that could kind of fund rural schools in Wyoming since, you know, Wyoming is very rural. And we feel that ranch kids, you know, we ma they matter, even if it's not, and, you know, other ranch kids, not just our own. Like, we feel this is a Wyoming issue, and we, we would like the legislature to um, develop a bill specifically for rural education. And so we have are you gotten a good uh, response? Have you gotten a good yeah, response yeah, from your I local representative and senate and senator? Okay. Ray Sherwood has been the best. If she's been our number one, it's amazing. And Ken come out and he was, he was pretty. Yeah, Ken, um, I could get you some of the names. Kind of, we have had some really, we had a Senator, uh, uh, John Winters. There's been, there's been great support. Anytime mm -hmm. we talk to people, we don't, they don't understand what's going on or how, how they don't understand what's going on. Because right. you know, there's there's precedence here. I get also I wanna say that this wouldn't just be a private school for our kids. It's a public school. If there was more families that lived here, you know, they would go to that school too. It's not it just so happens that we're the only family with young children at this at this sure. time. Yeah. Sure. Okay, well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, we, you know, we do this for the Wyoming Liberty Group. And so people in around Wyoming are going to be able to watch this and learn more about what's going on with you. And, and you, you'll be in our thoughts and prayers. Thank you Thank very you so much. much Thank you. Thank you. Anybody who wants to learn more about what's going on around Wyoming can go to whyliberty.org to sign up for our newsletter. Once again, whyliberty.org.